This is another um, nurse, and this is probably the, one of the more sad cases that I listened to um, as she described it to me. She was in the OR, and again, a very experienced nurse was scrubbed in on a case, a very dirty case. It was a woman with a buttocks abscess. She was a, an active, again, IV drug user, bad abscess. They had to give her general anesthesia to do the IND. And this nurse was standing beside the, the surgeon, and as he turned to, and we talk about those work practices as one of the mechanisms for really improving safety, as he turned to put the scalpel down, her hand was out, and he went right through her finger. Oh, yeah. This is after he had done the IND. And, um, she said, what happened in the OR, and there was a full team in the OR, was everyone suddenly went silent. She said, for about 30 seconds, no one said a word. And she, she said, for a minute, I didn't break scrub. She says, I just stood there and couldn't believe that it had happened. Everyone was in shock. The first thing she heard someone say was another nurse, the circulating nurse, said to her, what did you do to her? To her, not to the surgeon to her. And she had to say, I think I have to leave the case and go down and get treatment. Not one person walked her down. I just, I just want to sensitize people to the, the horrific kind of circumstance people can find themselves in. And the, the blaming sometimes as a way to protect yourself. I think it's the vicarious trauma. As I read these case studies that, that make it difficult for others who witness or are around this to take it in as well. In fact, here's one where a nurse was out of work for a period of time because she was on PEP again. Uh, she was sick. She never heard from any of her coworkers. She had worked in her facility for over 15 years. But for them to admit her vulnerability probably you know, put a light on their vulnerability. I think that's, I've come to the conclusion that that is part of what others around workers go through. But she just kept thinking, no one's calling me. No one's asking me how I am. And she was sick as a dog on, on the, the prophylaxis. But she realized she had to go outside that group to get the support she needed. And she eventually did OK. I think you know, the bottom line is you know, we, can't, we have to take responsibility um, for our own health and safety, whether it's um, within our environment, making sure that the, the right training is there, the right devices are there, the right the, the support is there in terms of management and leadership. Um, you know, that's another that was another recurring theme was the supervisors and managers in many of, the, many of these settings also weren't supportive of trying to get coverage for these nurses who needed to leave their their patients uh, to go down and get treatment. I know at the Brigham again where I worked. One of the things we instituted in the first year after my injury occurred was what we call the stick beeper. So that anyone in the OR, the ICUs in particular, ICU nurses will, you know, will not leave their patients. Because, you know, and, and you know, they're dedicated. You can't fault them for it. On the other hand, when an exposure occurs, you really should be doing what's best for yourself. So what we did was institute the stick beeper system. And so any time an exposure had occurred, whether wherever it was within the hospital, um, all they, the person had to do was set off that beeper and the supervisor would, would um, go down, um, get enough of a history to know prophylaxis was needed, and if necessary, bring it up to that person so that they could take the prophylaxis and then come down at the end of their shift. That's what made them more comfortable. So there are ways around this. It really is about how you uh, kind of work within your environment to make sure that you're getting what you need. I think, you know, Acknowledging that we haven't solved this problem yet and remain aware and vigilant for ourselves. Um, you know, certainly at ANA, we're doing a, we continue to advocate in this arena around trying to move beyond kind of what's been a largely a plateaued effect of the legislation at this point in time. We have a web, we, on our Nursing World website, we have a, a link that takes you to um, information, particularly around needle stick injuries. So I would encourage you to, to consider using that as a resource if you have any, uh, if you would like more information. But the last message is um, certainly in terms of social support, um, it was so important to these nurses. Whether or not the outcome, and none of these nurses had a bad outcome in terms of their seroconversion. That wasn't an issue for any of them. 
but going through this process and seeing people not willing or able to provide the support they needed was really profoundly disappointing and hurtful for them and really changed kind of how they looked at their environments after.